Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of St. Lawrence, martyr. St. Lawrence was a deacon of Pope St. Sixtus II, who was martyred. When the prefect of Rome arrested St. Lawrence, he distributed the possessions of the church to the poor to save them from confiscation. When he was ordered to hand over the monies of the church, St. Lawrence showed him a great number of good poor people, those for whom he provided food for from the church's possessions. This enraged the prefect even further, who then wanted St. Lawrence to deny his faith. He was tortured, and when the initial cruelties brought no results, more violent ones were applied. Finally, he was slowly roasted to death on a gridiron, dying a martyr's death in the year 258. In today's gospel, Jesus said, where I am, there also shall my minister be. Minister means servant. And St. Lawrence was the servant, the minister of Pope Sixtus, Pope Saint Sixtus II. He was a deacon. We can say that where Pope Saint Sixtus was, Saint Lawrence was, who was his servant. Pope Saint Sixtus died a martyr's death. So too did Saint Lawrence. Where I am, there also shall my minister be. Jesus was on the cross, dear brothers and sisters. That is where we have to be also. Be there with Christ on the cross. Be there on the cross when the church is going through her passion. It's as if the church has been going through her way of the cross, her via crucis, for some time now. And soon we will arrive on Calvary. Diaconia, which is where deacon comes from, means service. We can be at the service of the church through our suffering, in the apostolate of suffering, whereby we can help souls and help the church by uniting our sufferings to Christ crucified, uniting ourselves to Christ crucified. A suffering that doesn't put a limit on what it suffers. Whether suffering sickness, illness and pain, suffering from temptations and the assaults of the devil, suffering persecution and injustice, suffering misunderstandings, betrayals, interior afflictions. Whatever we can suffer, whenever we can suffer, whatever we can offer, let us offer it up for Holy Mother the Church. We can serve the Church with this spiritual martyrdom in imitation of Mary, the handmaid of the Lord, the co-redemptrix and queen of martyrs. When she said yes to becoming the mother of God, she said yes also to her spiritual martyrdom, for she knew the mother of the Messiah had to suffer. In every epoch, the church will go through its trials. Over the centuries, many men have sought to destroy the church, but it was always in vain. The church still stands and can never be destroyed. Not even the demons can destroy her, for the gates of hell will not prevail against her. And what about these times? What trial does the church have to endure in this, the early stages of the third millennium in the 21st century? 
There are many trials the church will have to suffer and will continue to suffer until the purification is complete and until we have done enough reparation for the sins that brought us into this current situation. Confusion in the church is far greater than natural disasters, calamities, war, and even a punishment of fire. These things kill the body. Confusion in the church kills the soul. One of the things we have to suffer is the great apostasy, which will continue and will get worse. These times are calling for us to become martyrs, we've said in the past. And this is a spiritual martyrdom that crucifies us. It can put us on the cross. And it can even be as if a sword has pierced one's soul. But so much good can come from these times. Believe it or not, dear brothers and sisters, do not waste your sufferings. Unite it to the sufferings of Christ on the cross and imitate Our Lady at the foot of the cross. For your sufferings can be used to contribute towards saving the church. Not that it depends on us to save the church. In the end, God will intervene. Jesus will rescue his bride, the church, through his holy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who will triumph. So good can come from these times. One thing that can come from these times is that we can hasten the coming of the restoration and the Blessed Virgin Mary will be exalted and glorified like never before. We are living in the age of Mary. And currently, we are also living in the time of St. Joseph. Do not despair. St. Joseph is so close to us in these times. He wants us to become aware of his paternal presence, his paternal heart, his most chaste heart, his powerful intercession, and his great love for the Blessed Virgin Mary. He can help us deepen our love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary, and he has a role to play in these times. Ite ad Joseph, go to Joseph, for he will help us to endure this spiritual martyrdom. Let us go, dear brothers and sisters, on this special day to St. Lawrence to learn how to be a minister, a servant, in imitation of Mary, the humble handmaid of the Lord. We saw that in the life of St. Lawrence, he showed that the poor were the church's treasures. Let us also do our part to help the poor through almsgiving and assisting the poor in whatever way we can. But there is another category of poor who are also part of the church's treasure. Those who are poor in spirit, who through their disposition receive the spiritual riches of the church and they are faithful to God. You'll find these souls among the remnant who are being persecuted within the church by their own brethren who have lost the faith. We must protect and look after this category of the poor also. Dear brothers and sisters, suffer for the church and be on the cross with Christ who said, where I am, there my minister will be also. And do not let suffering and pain take away your joy. St. Lawrence is known for his humor while he was being roasted alive, telling the executioners to turn him over as the other side wasn't done yet while he was being roasted. Remain cheerful and joyful during this time of persecution. The victory has already been won when Jesus died on the cross. So when we unite ourselves to the cross, we unite ourselves to the victory that was already won. 
and for those who enter into this apostolate of suffering, we are only distributing and sharing with others the victory of the cross. The cross will put a smile on your face. The cross will even make you laugh. The cross gives to us joy. The cross gives to us peace. So go to the cross without hesitation, dear brothers and sisters. Embrace the cross, hug the cross, kiss the cross. It will be a fount of joy for your soul. So we pray to St. Lawrence to intercede for us and to help us be joyful through suffering, to suffer and to give with joy. We heard in today's epistle, God loves a cheerful giver. And we go to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Queen of Martyrs, asking her to pray for us, strengthen us, and share with us her joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.